This is the Anastasia Rishkova podcast. Dante Vialdoris is a gorgeous soul and a talented poet. In our conversation, Dante has opened up about his depression and how poetry has helped him overcome negative thinking. I hope listening to his story can inspire you to tap into your own creativity as well. Hi. Hello, Dante. Hi again. <laughs> so how are you today? I'm good. And you? Good. Thank you. So I met you on Instagram recently. Yes. We haven't actually had uh, extensive conversations yet, but I really like your poetry and I wanted to talk to you about thank it. You. Thank you so much. No, thank you. Uh, thank you for writing. I was going to ask, so when did you start writing? Let's just jump into that. I started when I was 16. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so, how old are you um, now, if you don't mind me asking? Um, I, I turned 24 next week on Saturday. Oh, awesome. Well, remind me to tell you happy birthday. <laughs> I'll write <laughs> it in my calendar on Saturday. That's cool. Yeah. Um, and yeah, when you started, like, what made you start writing poetry uh, at that age? Um, you know, during that time, um, mentally, I wasn't, you know, going through, you know, you know the best you know, school year. And the thing was, I would always read it here and there. And even from time to time, I would watch spoken word. And and just one day I kept on watching. I'm like, you know what, I should try and give this a shot. Just, just not even, you know, spoken word, just write, just write out my problems and issues. And, um, and after, you know, talking with my parents about it and stuff, um, you know, they kind of like, they kind of gave me a task to write down a list of what was wrong. Yeah. And then after I did it, you know, I looked at it. I'm like, you know, I think I could turn this into a poem of some sort. Yeah. And then and ever since then, I've just written, written yeah. so much. And never stop. Well, that's amazing. I, I've just mentioned this before when we were talking. So your name is Dante. And that's yes, your real Dante. name. And yes. like I said, your parents never even given you a chance. You get, They're giving you a, the best poet name ever. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yep. hmm. Yeah. Sorry if you hear um, tapping on the floor. That's my dog walking around. That's, a- <laughs> That's cool. So y- your parents sound like they've been very supportive of this, uh, of your writing and your poetry. Yes, definitely. Um, and also, and also my two brothers also. Yeah, amazing. And how? And this has been a healing experience for you. Definitely, definitely. Um, e- even at times, I could, you know, just go back to just thinking, you know bad thoughts or something and just just as soon as that happened I just want to put something in my phone or just put it down on paper something to start off to get you know just to you know get get those thoughts out of my head as best as I could yeah definitely well it has been the same for me and um, I hear that's a very common theme for a lot of poets do you write anything else or is it primarily poetry um primarily poetry um that's what that's what i just you know you know just stick with free verse um yeah it's just you know certain things you know haikus and stuff i just want to write and hopefully nothing like holds me back in that sense <laughs> that's true um what's the process like of you start writing and what has no, it been uh, and how has it changed the process through time um a lot of the times i could just be going for a run or just playing a video game and just like a certain scene yeah. which just could trigger something and even you know just with my love poem i could just hear a song mm-hmm. or just something random could happen i could try and put a concept behind that that's interesting video games what uh video games do you play if you don't if you don't mind sharing that uh, no a lot of times i do like a lot of space space adventures and stuff because oh, because cool. i'm always you know just thinking of well, okay like what else is out there you know yeah. instead of being here yeah, and stuff like that yeah i think about that a lot as well actually um that topic very much interests me and it's such an interesting topic about what's out there in the space and other is there life out there because we haven't quite proven it yet mm-hmm. yeah yeah do you write uh, about that as well does that inspire you i'm i'm, I'm sorry do, do you write about that as well about um does it inspire um, you the mystery um, of life <laughs> yeah 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 definitely a mystery of life not necessarily just you know about space you know just certain you know questions i could have just like the next person mm, what what kind of questions you know um you know with <clears throat> with all like certain wars going on 
yeah. you'll see some like a stray dog or even someone homeless asking for money it's just kind of okay like what happened before before their situation happened where they possibly on the road of becoming famous did they make that one bad decision that caused it and just mm -hmm. just you know wondering um, if i could step in their shoes a little bit and just to see you know i think one of the things we're so caught up in the in appearance and stuff we never ask you know what happened why did why did this happen you know just certain certain things like that yeah you know well you seem like a very sensitive person and um cutting being caught up in appearance it's a very interesting thing you've mentioned because from I've never been to America and I've never been to California, but you're from California and I've heard that yes. that's, that's a place where that you can see that a lot. I don't know if I'm generalizing yeah, or yeah. making a misjudgment. Oh, no, 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 just, um, you know, especially in somewhere like Hollywood or Los Angeles where, you know, with, with you know, the Instagram and all the technology and stuff. Yeah. Um, it, it hacks, it, it definitely has its way to help people. But yeah. um, unfortunately, you'll see certain videos on YouTube or something, and it's like, okay, if that camera wasn't there or such and such, you wouldn't be acting like this. You wouldn't be. So it's definitely it's uh, a conflict. I think us now yeah. more and more as human beings we face. I think so. Um, and how do you how do you find that balance? Um, you know, just always asking myself, am am I being as authentic as I possibly can. Um, if I'm, you know, am I doing this because I really want to do this, or, mm -hmm. or is it because my insecurities are going to take over? Mm -hmm. You know, you know that ego voice in the head is going to, you know, persuade me otherwise. Yeah, to shut that down, that ego. Well, that's <clears throat> yeah. that's very wise of you, especially for such a young person like yourself. I mean, I'm not too much older than you, but still, that's a yeah. very wise way to approach life. Yeah, um, you know, out of my brothers, um, you know, I've kind of been seen as the old soul of the family, you know, just <laughs> just certain things, I guess, my age group do a lot of. It's just something I'm not into. Mm -hmm. um, and, and if I do, I can't do it on a constant basis. I have to, you know, I'll try it out here and there, but then yeah. also, you know, I'll just take a, I'll take a break. What do you mean by that? Give me an example. Um... I wouldn't say so much antisocial, mm -hmm. but um, I know, you know, there's some people who could just constantly go out constantly and just be fine. And me, I'm every so now and then. Yeah, I agree with you. You know, for me, I am what they call an introverted extrovert and I like to go out yeah. and see yeah. friends. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but yeah definitely, definitely. I feel like we collect energy when we're around people and I just need to go into my zone once in a while. And then again, yeah. write or do something else um, that's creative. Yeah. yeah. Definitely, definitely. Mm, you mentioned old soul. Um, do you meditate? Um, I'm starting to slowly. Yeah. Um, yeah, even, even if it's like just five minutes or even just a couple of minutes, just time mm -hmm. to just breathe. And yeah. then, you know, I could just clear, clear out the cobwebs a little bit. Yeah, exactly. And does how has that helped you? Even five minutes. How has that um, yeah, mm -hmm. um, it's definitely been helping. Um, I know, I know, I do need to start doing it more and more. Uh -huh. um, um, it has definitely helped me with writing. Um, you know, just taking a breather, um, assessing the situation that's at hand with myself. You know, of having you know those bad thoughts. Um, you know, depression creeping in again, stuff like that. Yeah, absolutely. Well, depression, that's an interesting topic if you'd like to delve into it. Like I've um, always had, I've had chronic and functioning depression all my life and meditation, mm -hmm. writing, being creative. That has definitely helped me move from that as well. Yeah. And I think you saying that and whoever is going to listen in, that, mm -hmm. might, that might be a clue that might help them as well to find yeah. that. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Um... You know, you'll see something like on CNN with Robin Williams, you know, uh, and I and I forgot the doctor's name, but he said, you know, with artists, whether it is a actor, a writer, you'll see throughout history, great painters have, you know, you know, lost it a little bit. Um, you know, just, you know, we're always thinking we're always trying to create something. And unfortunately, 
with that, we do become, you know, our biggest critic naturally, I should say. Yeah. But unfortunately, it gets to a point where we just add so much junk and it's not healthy. That Well, that's true. Why do you think that happens with creative people? I think something I've noticed, we tend to judge ourselves more compared to what the outside would be. Mm -hmm. Some leaving a bad comment and stuff like that. Um, you know, we always tend to, you know, judge ourselves the harshest, you know, come up with these scenarios that I wouldn't say impossible. It just, you know, we want to make that big leap right off the bat and without even doing tests, well, without like doing like a test run or something of that sort. And we just can get very chaotic in that sense. Absolutely. Like swinging from one extreme to the other. Yeah, one yeah. One moment you're happy, and one moment you're like, "Oh, wait a minute, where did that, where did that happiness go?" Where yeah, um, you know, and definitely, you know, with social media, things like Twitter, you know, mm -hmm. you know, we get that like so fast and so instant mm -hmm. to the point, you know, probably say fifty, sixties, you know, just word of mouth, yeah. waiting, and just, just, you know, little. You no, know, hey, you no, know, hey, I saw you do this. And just just those little things, even though it took time, it was definitely more appreciated to where, where it's so instant, you know, snap of a finger. It was like, OK, cool. I got one like, yeah, uh, yeah, but this person gets this like and that like. And then it's just so much. And then you compare yourself with other people. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's definitely comparing comparing yourself with people. You don't have to. Um, it's not yeah. it's not really a competition for me. As far as like writing, um, yeah. you know, I don't try and compare. I just look, read it and just, you know, appreciate the art for what it is. Absolutely. Well, one thing I've noticed recently, I've been uh, traveling with family and they love museums and art and paintings. Yeah. And I've been, I usually when I go to a museum, I try and look at every painting because it's a, it's a famous artist and mm -hmm. uh, somebody else admires it but this time i've realized that you don't have to look at every painting because not every painting is for you it doesn't speak to mm -hmm. you and if it doesn't speak yeah. to you that's okay <clears throat> yeah same with, definitely same with every poem mm. yes um yeah i could just you know i'll read something and that could could definitely um it doesn't have to exactly you know connect with me but i could you know read it and just say okay this person feels this whatever's going on in their life, that's their reason for writing that. To where mm -hmm. some people, you know, they'll see it and automatically think, oh my God, something's wrong with this person, such and such, and it's definitely uh, funky. <laughs> it, it is. It, it's, yeah. it's a misjudgment. I mean, sometimes yeah. you write down pretty dark things. I mean, as in you, as in I have done that, and that helps me get rid of, get rid of those, release those dark things. It doesn't mean that I'm in yes. a dark place necessarily yeah yeah, yeah. um you know yeah and just like you know with the poems i've written yeah. it could be up and down up and down uh, a random topic that could just come to mind mm -hmm. because in, because you know in this life that's that's just the reality of it and you know for some people they could just be raised in a certain thing to where it's just this one yeah. lane this one how you do it how how it's supposed to come out and you know i try my best not to you know go down that road not to overthink it you mean yes you definitely yeah. not to overthink it not to overthink it yeah absolutely well i think that's when the best art comes out when did you start uh when did you start putting your poems out there on the internet um i've done it for i say like a year or so but nothing towards this constant uh, yeah. to the point um i would i planned to start an instagram account on it um, mm -hmm. I would, I would see other stuff, but, but it just wouldn't come to mind until, mm -hmm. until, you know, just right of one day, I'm like, you know, what? I should start you know, sharing these and, and see what mm -hmm. happens. And, you know, as you see, this is happening, you know, <laughs> um, this is something I didn't expect to happen, but, but I, I'm very glad I'm sharing it and I'm definitely glad, you know, I'm sharing my time with you like this right now. Thank you very much. And I'm glad you agreed to speak with me. I'm very thankful for that. Um, I really do believe when you do things, and I like to say it might sound cheesy for some people, but when you do things from your heart, the universe yes. just opens up for you and all of a sudden all new doors and windows <laughs> open up yeah. for you and things that you never expected. Definitely, yeah. definitely. Absolutely. How, yeah, what, has it been transformational for you to have people look at your art? 
Well, definitely, um, you know, just just you no know, small comments as oh my god, this is good. Wow, wow, this <laughs> stunned me. I'm definitely I'm definitely shocked at the response I've been getting. Mm. I've asked my brother, hey, what do you think of these poems and stuff? And he said, you know, he likes it. My dad likes it. You know, my um, you know, my mom and brother, they're definitely glad I'm doing this more and more. Because um, even though I've been writing for so long, I haven't been, you know, the one to just share it with them so fast. Because, you know, I'm not you know, self-conscious about, yeah. okay, is this one little poem about to turn into a two-hour lecture or something? <laughs> You know, and, you know, you know, it's not my intention, but, you know, just, you know, certain things I don't want them to worry and stuff like that. But, you know, um, you know, I'm just sharing more and more and they have, you know, um, you know, their own take on it. And, and I try my best to listen. Absolutely. Well, it's amazing that they're so supportive of your mm-hmm. art. That that's not very common, I think, because usually you'd hear parents say, well, you should you should really find a real job. <laughs> Yeah, 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 definitely, definitely. Yeah, absolutely. What inspired you to put your poems out there? Um, pretty much, you know, just seeing everyone else's, um, uh, you know, just seeing just seeing their work and stuff like that. I'm like, no, I'll, I'll give this a shot. Let me see what happens. And, you know, people like them. Yeah, absolutely. Well, people do like them. I like them. I love them. <laughs> and I thought Thank I you. should ask you about them. <laughs> but when yeah. I started it, um, I didn't realize how big of a community was. Of yeah. poets, yeah, just yeah, just yeah. I was poetry. definitely shocked at the amount of people that have, you know, liked and like wanted to follow me and stuff like that. Absolutely, and it's so supportive because it's such a vulnerable thing to do to put your poetry out there. Um, I mean, I always compare it to other art, like paintings. Paintings you can't really read, but words they have so much meaning behind them. So definitely, it's like putting your soul out on paper and letting everyone read it. Yeah. Yeah. It's very brave of you. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. So, so you grew up in California. How, yes. How, how is it like, I've never been to America, actually. So I've always oh, yeah. wanted to know, what, what's it like to grow up in? Uh, you know, I'm from, I'm from a town called Marino Valley, California. Mm-hmm. Um, definitely part, part of the desert area of California. And, you know, it's, you know, with a place like California, there's definitely many cultures around to get. Um, yes. So so you learn different things just from walking down the street, uh, taking the bus, going, you know, you know, just going to school. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's definitely a wide, wide group of people. Definitely. That's true. Well, it's very close to um, Mexico, right? And Spanish speaking. Yes. Country. Do you learn Spanish at school? Just out of curiosity. No, um, I don't speak Spanish. I um, I do need to yeah. start learning it because oh, really? yeah. because you know you know I'm so I'm so much around it. Um, you know, um, soon soon at some point I will start learning. Definitely. Yeah, <laughs> that sounds interesting. Um, what else did I want to ask you? So you mentioned music. What sort uh, of yeah. music do you listen to when you um, get inspired? You know, uh, definitely a lot of soulful. You know, um, you know, just songs with, with substance and not just, you know, the instrumental of, you know, right. trying to hype myself up, uh, you know, just, you know, especially a lot of, you know, old school stuff, because I do feel, you know, in those times, you know, substance was definitely key. Yes. Old school. How far old school? <laughs> uh, you know, just sometimes, you know, I might try and dabble into like a 50s, 60s song yeah. from like the doo-wop era. You know, and it's just something as like tying your shoe. They were able to put that into a, just a hit song to where everyone can connect to it. You know, you know, just definitely um, a lot of '90s R&B. Um, you know, especially that helps me with love poems because mm. you know, um, I would say they're definitely more honest in that sense. You know, um, I understand sometimes you want to be clever, but then also sometimes you just have to get straight to the point. Absolutely. Yeah, definitely. Straight to the point. It's always good. Hmm. Is there anything else you want to tell about your process? How has it evolved uh, since you've been 16 until, and then? Um, definitely, you know, when I first started, I was definitely trying to copy the spoken word format somewhat yeah. of rhyming something. But, you know, you know, just as I got older, it's just gotten to a point, you know, I just want to write this, mm-hmm. uh, you know, it's kind of like, you know, first draft and then and then your final draft. I want to, you know, write first and just see see where 
where everything is. And then after, if I feel, you know, secure about, about, you know, about that topic, about that subject, especially something about myself, um, you know, you know, it's definitely something, you know, I always do, um, Mm-hmm. Um, especially, especially upon sharing it, I really want to make sure I'm able to, you know, connect with people. Absolutely. Do you learn about yourself through your own poetry? Oh yes, definitely. You know, uh, you know, from posting my poetry, I've gone back, you know, just read some of my old stuff. Because mm-hmm. sometimes I would just write, write it, get those thoughts out, and just okay, close the notebook and just put it away. Yeah. But now, you know, upon sharing it, um, I definitely shock myself. <laughs> um, here and there about I'm like, okay it definitely I didn't I didn't know I would you know, write something like this or even be capable of writing something like this yeah and you know yeah. definitely you know just going back it kind of like my own like time travel machine yeah. of just you know <laughs> trying you know trying trying to figure myself out getting uh yeah getting back to where you started I guess definitely definitely mm. Do you do any other creative? Do you get into any other creative end of wars? Yeah, um, right now, right now I'm learning about uh, about photography because that's really what uh, what um, I want to do. I want to be a freelance photographer. Oh, okay. You no, know, yeah, yeah, definitely. You know, poetry and and photography kind of go hand in hand. Um, okay. You know, you know, you're trying to tell you know a story. You're trying to um, send a message to mm-hmm. whether it's just a headshot. Or just like a landscape, you know, hopefully someone sees that and you can just, you know, stop thinking, you know, that thoughts and just go to a place to where like they feel secure and safe. Absolutely. And what, yeah, what do you like to photograph? You know, right now, you know, they've been, you know, just, um, I would say, you know, going on a run, I could spot a flower or something like yeah. that, or just, or just a nice view and I'll take a picture of it. Um, and then, you know, hopefully at some point I could start, start, um, taking pictures of people or, or just like going to, I would say, you know, certain festivals and try and, mm-hmm. you know, create my own little, um, montage of, of things. True. True. Well, uh, one of my best friends, uh, which, who I did the, uh, who I did the first podcast with actually, he's a photographer. And oh yeah, yeah, yes, yes. Oh, okay. You've seen that's cool. Yes. Yeah. It took him quite a while to get to a place where he could he wanted to do something that he loves but he talks a lot about uh energy and photographing energy and taking yeah. headshots that's what he loves to do and yeah that would be interesting i mean i could always connect you to him if you're interested in learning some more because i'm sure he'd love to just talk to you <laughs> oh yeah definitely i would love to i would love to yeah for sure uh he right now he's i think doing <coughs> photographing miss world for new zealand Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. so he prefers to taking uh, taking headshots of young people. Definitely, yeah. definitely, you know, you know, that's awesome. That's awesome. That is awesome. Yes, and I remember the way that he told me the way that he got into photography was uh, he went to retreat that with his wife for ten days. I uh, can't remember what they're called. The Buddhist retreat where they oh, okay. where they okay. they go silent for ten days, and he said. Um, after going silent, he started seeing energy around flowers and people, and capturing the essence of um, the essence of the thing that's alive, not just an image of it. So that was an interesting, yeah. interesting insight into it. Yeah, definitely. You know, um, you no, know, just this definitely the longest time in a while I've written. You know, so much, um, and that's yeah. definitely you know coming from other people's comments. And stuff, you know, sharing it more and more with with my family, I definitely get, you know, inspired, and definitely, you know, it's helping me more and more, you know, just deal with my own, my own problems, my my own in insecurities and stuff like that. Mm, absolutely. Well, I think dealing with insecurities and social anxieties is a life, a life uh, time work. For sure. Yeah, definitely. Do definitely. you have any tools or advice for people who might still be dealing with those things? Um, yeah, definitely. I would definitely say first you have to be honest with yourself. Definitely, mm-hmm. you know, um, you know, things like with things like social media, you're able to kind of paint a picture yeah. to either make someone believe, you know, you're this way when you know really you're not. You know, yeah. um, you know, people could put a you know, a nice little smile on, 
could post a picture and then put put a caption that's you know somewhat inspiring um, inspiring to where you know unfortunately you've seen with certain artists you know they'll paint that image but you know behind closed doors they're dealing with you know their own demons um to where to where they don't want to share share it because you know this is a judgmental society and with such a wide range of things like you know, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, mm-hmm. you know, people are so quick to judge without, without ever, you know, just, you know, you know, just asking those questions and, you know, you know, trying to get over those thoughts, uh, you know, you have to be honest with yourself, you know, you can't lie to yourself. That's not, you know, a healthy thing. Um, Absolutely. you know, and, and, and even, you know, you know, talking now, this is definitely something new, new for me. Because, you know, during during the time when I first started writing, I tried it. I tried therapy, um, Mm -hmm. you know, tried a little bit, didn't work out for me personally. But, you know, as as I've gotten older, you know, written more and shared more, um, you know, it's definitely becoming um, a better healing process. Right. So poetry has been more of a therapy for you than actually going to see a professional. Yes. Yes. I would have to agree with you because I have seen, um, I think, free professionals by this point when I was younger and when I was going through the same things. And <laughs> I think only one of them was willing to listen and the other ones were telling me what, what I should be doing with my life. And that's yeah. not always helpful. Yeah. Now, no judgment to therapists because there are some wonderful ones, but mm-hmm. that's for sure. That hasn't worked for me either. And I really do believe that best therapy is doing what you love. And yes, being, definitely. And like you said, being yourself. Mm. Yeah, um, you know, just, you know, this day and age, you yeah. know, so, so many people are, are willing to put, you know, a certain label because mm-hmm. you're this or that. And then, you know, a lot of the times we're so afraid of people's reaction towards what what we really want to do or what what we really want to say to the point kind of put ourselves in this shell that just it's filled with so much chaos that you know we end up spiraling out of control because of it well absolutely because we lose ourselves in the way that you can't really put yourself in a box because there are no boxes for people we're all so different and unique in such a way that um that's impossible yeah yeah definitely definitely Mm. oh wow that's um those are very brave things you're talking about. I love that. I love this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. This is really cool. Yeah, and it's interesting how um, similar our process has been in writing. Mm-hmm. Mm. You know, just, you know, sharing stuff like that, you know, I'm definitely, well, I've definitely been surprised by how many people, you know, can can relate to me. Yeah. Um, you know, and just sharing more is definitely a realization that, you know, this many people on the planet, someone has to relate to you at some point and that someone could could definitely, you know, see that and definitely would want to, you know, step in and help out. Even it's just like a, you know, it's okay, it gets better, or just, you know, while while your work is really good. You know, just sort of small things I've learned could be, you know, the biggest help. Absolutely. And I think the fact that we live in this global village <clears throat> Uh, that we're no longer just talking to our neighbors. We're talking to our worldly neighbors. And sometimes we're born in a society that is not really, that we don't fit in. You know, Um, I was born into a Russian family and then we moved to Japan. Yeah, and I, um, no offense to Russian culture because it's a beautiful culture, but some of the things I never really understood about um, about that and i was i'm very thankful that i found so many international friends <laughs> yeah you know, uh, you know, yeah you know just you know you know you meet different people you know you know you'll you know take pieces you know here and there about about what works for you what doesn't mm-hmm. um you know that's definitely something you know from writing that's definitely you know helped me expand my own thoughts um to, to where even if there's a point where I do feel I might get judgmental, I'll just, you know, you know just take a step back, see see what's going on. It's, um, just try my best to be as respectful as I possibly can instead of just, you know, talking, talking just to talk because because it's what, you know, someone else is doing. 
Absolutely. Well, it, it's still difficult. I mean, especially not mm-hmm. judging. We're not perfect, but it's yeah. the best thing is to notice that you're judging and then say, "Oh, okay. Why am I judging? Is it because yeah. I'm afraid to be to become that that is I'm judging? Then maybe I should maybe I should work on that, and not become that." Mm-hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. I see no. what you mean. Yeah. Mm. No, it's no definitely, you know, because because for me, you know, I'm not, I'm not really the biggest talker, <laughs> um, you know, just, yeah, you know, you know, just being, just being the shy kid growing up, growing up with something like a stutter, you know, um, you know, I got that from my father. Uh, it's not, it's not scientifically proven yet, but, you know, definitely, you know, that's what, that's what it's become, you know, um, you know, that shy, quiet kid, you know, you're always in your head thinking about something, you want to yeah. say this, but, you know, just physically, it's just not in you, um, you know, just certain things could be, you know, trying to help yourself be more fluent. And the thing is with that, um, you know, that's that's how uh, how I would say one of my insecurities could definitely, you know, hold me back. Because, you know, for a lot of us, we wanted we wanted to just happen. We wanted to, you know, get get away from that one little thing that's kind of holds us back to the point of instead of you know, working on it, taking it day by day. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, so many people still, you know, just wanted to have it instantly. But, you know, I'm learning now more and more. That's just not the reality of it. Um, you know, Absolutely. you know, I, yeah, I don't think there's no shame anymore. You know, like doing a breathing exercise or even just, you know, doing this is definitely a first for me <laughs> or, yeah. you know, definitely definitely in a while to where like you know i've just sat down and talked to someone who's willing to listen willing to understand yeah well thank you i um i appreciate you saying that actually but wait a minute thank you, you say you had a stutter or you have a stutter yeah. how yeah, did yeah, you yeah. work um, I on still that do. yeah 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 um surprisingly i'm i'm actually fluent right now yes. um but yeah I, but i think i think that's just you know just stems from I, I even wouldn't call it a comfort zone, but definitely I'm more relaxed knowing that someone is willing to understand it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, I th- you know, with having a stutter, you know, you definitely see the I- ignorant side of a human being can, compared to, you know, talking mm-hmm. to someone who's willing to, to listen and understand why, why this is. So, so you definitely, you know, become the quiet kid just to make sure you don't get made fun of. And and even now, just talking about it, um, you know, it definitely reflects on, you know, definitely that's one of the things that has definitely, you know, driven me to to writing more and more. Yeah. You know, I may not be able to, you know, speak it, but I could, you know, just put it down on paper just to get those thoughts um, out of my head and stuff. You know, creating those those bad those bad scenarios all the time. Yeah. You know, just trying to think of something positive and you know, you know, just put it down to paper and see and see if that does anything that's uh beautiful that that's amazing to me that you actually i think you could definitely read your poetry now because you sound very very fluent but Mm -hmm. um i had dyslexia all my life and i had no idea oh yeah my parents still don't believe me (laughs) in a funny (laughs) way i went to when i went to university i found out from a therapist there that um it's my the way that I read is that words jump on paper so I was always the slowest reader at school and that would stop me from writing and that way I thought I would never be a good writer even though I loved reading and I loved creating stories and images in my head Um, but Yeah. yeah that's very interesting and working on that has really helped me out as well so that's very inspiring that you're saying that right now and so many people can hear that and say well there's nothing really that's stopping you, only yourself. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Mm. Take it slow. Yeah. Take it day by day. Yeah, mm-hmm. definitely. That's really cool. Yeah. Um, you've mentioned other hobbies that you have. And yeah, you know, mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, just I would say hobbies for me. You know, you know, um, you know, playing, playing video games. Yeah. You know, watching. You know, watching. You know, just different videos of you know uh 
you know, photography tips or something of that sort, or or even just watching like I would say a rap battle, to where to where you know, oh, e- e- even though I mean, even though these people are talking with so much aggression, in a way they're definitely you know telling their side of where they're from, whether it's like the rough streets of Detroit, Michigan, or even Baltimore, yeah. um, and even even you'll meet someone or, or hear an MC that's from the UK and you'll get their side of their story um, and their experience in life and how they want to, you know, attack that situation. It's definitely something to where, to where I listen to it. I'm like, okay, okay. That makes sense. I can see why this person would, you know, would think there's someone to do that to where, you know, someone could just see it on first watch and think, Oh my God, these people are crazy or such. such. It's like, no, no, they're probably not. I would say as crazy. It's just, you know, the hand, um, the hand they've been dealt with, you know, turns them into a certain person. Mm, absolutely. That's interesting that you like to listen to rap battles. Are you, would you ever consider yeah. to doing your poetry live or reading your poetry at all? Mm, probably, you know, probably I won't say live, but definitely, you know, sharing it more and more to the point. If I could put it into a book or even just yes. mm-hmm. doesn't have to be like a whole bunch of pages just something to where it could just be on the subject i would say just like you know just a book on love poems i've written yeah. i could hopefully you know put condense that and just you know share it and see and see what happens mm, absolutely is that one of your favorite things to write love poems or um yeah you know you know just gets my you know you know just get those um those bad thoughts away from me you know, I've written a whole bunch of love poems and stuff. Even, even though, like, I don't even have a girlfriend, I just, you know, imagine I do and just put That's down beautiful. on paper what, what I would say to her, you know, just depending on the subject. That's beautiful. One of my teachers back, back in the day, I think, uh, back when I was 14, she told me that writers don't actually usually write about what they experience. They write about what they imagine. So they're not necessarily... Yeah. Yeah, it's not necessarily yeah. experience as such. So that's interesting that you mentioned that. Yeah, uh, you know, just, you know, certain love poems I've written, I've asked, you know, my dad, you know, with, you know, with like the times we're in, the, you know, the hashtag me too and stuff like that. I'm yeah. like, you know, you, you know, do women like, like this though? Do women really appreciate these kind of things? Mm-hmm. And, you know, just hearing um, people's responses like, yeah, they do just have to wait for the, you know, right one. It's just, you know, just those kind of things that just make me, you know, keep writing, you know, um, just, just a love poem, whether it's like yeah. uh, two pages or just even just a couple lines just to get those thoughts out. Interesting. How has it been like being in America during the Me Too movement? Because it's been obviously started and yeah started you know there. definitely um definitely um you know a topic a lot of people are tackling um you know and the good thing with social media you know people are, are able to tell their stories and even people e- e- even though it's never happened to them people do have sympathy for mm-hmm. certain victims whether man or female you know um it's definitely you know yeah. in my opinion you know it's much more than just the hashtag. You know, some people put hashtags at anything, post it, or even try and put something to where to where it's not even really for you know the cause. It's just you know you know get attention to say you know I did it to make myself feel good, or even in a way you know they'll do it just to say they did it and they feel some validation you know within themselves um, to where to where you know they do it and then and then you know they'll not even follow up with it or not even really, you know, stick to it in, in that sense. Um, you know, social media has its, you know, its good things and also its bad things. Um, it you know, mm-hmm. that's why, you know, with like a hashtag me too or something of that subject, you know, it's definitely much more than just, you know, posting a video. You definitely have to, you know, say, say what you mean, mean what you say. Yeah. And if you're sharing it, hopefully it's, it's helpful for, someone else who's listening into it. Well, social media is, I think, a perfect reflection of our society just in general about the happenings yeah. in the world. Yeah. yeah. It's, there's a lot of beautiful art that's coming out, and I do love Instagram for that reason. But at the same time, like you've mentioned, there's, there's the other side of the reflection of what people ha- haven't quite worked on yet. Let's put it yeah. that way. Mm. Yeah. 
you know, um, you know, you know, with what I've written, you know, the thought of that could be, you know, you know, can go back to, to, to the time I was born. Um, you know, I was born June 2nd, 1994. Yeah. Um, but the thing is, you know, with me, um, uh, um, I was I was definitely sick, a sick baby, a sick child. Um, to to on the point upon being born, I was you know pr- pronounced dead twice. You really? know, um, yeah, oh, yeah. That must have um, been scary for your parents. Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. You know, and you know, if when you're a child, you'll hear about it. You know, uh, you know, just definitely hearing that, mm-hmm. definitely you know, hit you in a spot where like, oh, okay, um, and then you'll hear. You know, you no, know, not no attack on religion of that sort. But when you hear, you know, God gave you a second chance for for this mm-hmm. reason, it's definitely the, you know, especially as you get older, you hear that again, and you know, so many thoughts of, okay, I'm supposed to be dead, but I'm not. Why is this? Mm-hmm. Why is it that I'm still here? To mm-hmm. where you'll see a video of a kid starving. I'm like, that kid deserves a second chance way more than I do. Compared to, you know, I could be 100% healthy, but somehow, yeah. you know, you see a homeless kid or you see what's going on in Syria, you know, bombs being thrown. You're like, I'm like, okay, if I'm supposed to have a second chance, you know, are these kids supposed to be having second chances or or is there something that could, you know, better their lives compared to, you know, just being surrounded by so much chaos, unfortunately. That's interesting things you're... Uh talking about you definitely have a very big heart and there's a Thank word you. for it and i live in um, austria right now so i'm learning german there's a word for it in german that i can't quite remember and when i do i'll let you know but they have a whole word that a world that a uh, word that explains um a depression about the state of the world yeah yeah so that's interesting is that if you don't mind me asking is that where your depression is mainly been deriving from um no not not necessarily but uh you know definitely my depression you know as i've written it definitely stems from my own insecurities you know stuff like that or just certain you know past things probably being made fun of because of my stutter or just you know mm. um hearing kids something can be very mean yeah yeah, you know, uh, and then and then you'll have the, your own thoughts and then you'll you know, watch something on the news that could probably align with it. And then, you know, you just start, you know, thinking these sort of things to where to where you feel it's probably best to put it down on paper. Um, and it doesn't even have to be this huge thing. It could just be just a random thought and that could just, you know, close, close a certain chapter in your life to where, you know, I'm done with that. I don't want to be a part of that, um, you know, just trying, trying to better yourself just by, you know, just seeing something or just putting down, you know, one line that could just help you get through it and stuff like that. Mm, it's amazing what words can do. But um, I still want to go back to the fact that you have such a big heart and you care mm-hmm. so much about the world and children and I'm guessing, um, yeah, people just in general. Yeah, um, you know, just, you know, doing this right now, you know, growing up the shy kid, shy, quiet kid, you know, it was definitely, you know, more and more about myself. Um, mm-hmm. I've learned, you know, just, just, uh, you know, my dad saying, you know, you're a good person or just you saying I have a big heart. Yeah. That's definitely, you know, still at times, you know, shocker to me because, you know, with what I've written, even, you know, having, you know, those bad thoughts you know it's always shocking to hear someone you know give like a good compliment a genuine genuine mm-hmm. good compliment i'm like oh okay thank you <laughs> you know you know just you know, you know you know just you know um hearing those things definitely you know put put you in a good place and not and not you know be angry at yourself about something that happened months ago or even years ago uh, you know you know it's definitely mm-hmm. definitely a safe haven mm-hmm. definitely just hearing those things Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Well, I feel, yeah, I feel the same way. I have to say, yeah, definitely. Well, um, anything else you want to add to our conversation? We went um, deep today. 
Yeah, yeah, you know, definitely, you know, something, you know, I don't, I don't have much to say anymore right now because, you know, I definitely, you know, this is like the first time I've talked, I've talked like this in a while, yeah. but, you know, um, you know, hopefully, hopefully when it comes out, um, well, not hopefully when it comes out, but definitely when it comes out on YouTube, I could definitely share it and hopefully word of mouth, you know, starts and, you know, it could definitely help you. I definitely find it to help out your channel and just people Thank like so us. Much. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you so much. I'm just glad that I had this opportunity to talk to you and get Same to know a little so more about you. And I hope we'll talk yeah. again. And I hope this just the, oh, yes, the start exactly. of a thank you. yeah lifelong friendship. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, you know, you know. Just thank you so much for having me on here. It's definitely an honor just to talk to another, you know, you know, another creative mind. Yeah. And, you know, hopefully, and hopefully this helps out somebody. So thank well, you so much. Thank you, Dante, and um, have a wonderful day. And I'll talk to you. You again. too. Okay. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye. You have a good one.